So we've said if we've got data that are from a multivariate normal distribution with mean, mu, and variance matrix sigma, then we know how to do the hypothesis test. We compute the test statistic zeta, which is x bar minus um, mu sigma inverse x bar minus mu. And if we know sigma, then we know, I've got an n here, then we know that uh, this has a chi-squared p distribution. And that allows us to do a, a hypothesis test of the form h naught mu equals some value versus the alternative. But what happens if sigma is unknown? Well, we could estimate it by using the sample covariance matrix S. So instead of using the zeta here, we could use something like x bar minus mu S inverse x bar minus mu. And I forgot my transposers. Okay. Well, in order to do the hypothesis test with this, we'd need to know, let's call this uh, zeta um, squared again. We'd need to know what is the distribution of zeta squared under h naught. Okay. Before, when sigma was known, we could work out explicitly that zeta squared had the chi-squared distribution. But now, x bar is random and s is random. And so we know that the answer may no longer be chi-squared. Zeta squared may not, no longer have a chi-squared distribution. So we need to work out the sampling distribution of zeta squared under h naught. So that's what this video and the next video is about. So this video is about the Wishart distribution. And the Wishart distribution tells us the distribution of the sample covariance matrices. So in univariate statistics, if, we, if we've got x1 up to xn from a normal distribution with mean mu and variance sigma squared, where sigma squared is now unknown, what we often do is estimate sigma squared by s squared, the sample variance, and we know that this has a chi-squared distribution. So the question is, what is the distribution of s? Of the sample covariance matrix s, which remember is 1 over n sum of xi minus x bar, xi minus x bar transposed. So this is where the Wishart distribution comes in. So let's let x1 up to xn be iid samples from a normal distribution, length p, zero mean vector, and covariance matrix sigma. Then the quantity m, which is the sum of xi, xi transposed, so this, just to be clear, is a P by P matrix. Then M has a Wishart distribution. Okay. And if the sum here is includes N terms, then we say uh, it has a Wishart distribution with N degrees of freedom and scale matrix sigma. We write that M twiddles W for Wishart, P dimensions, scale matrix, sigma, and N degrees of freedom. So we're gonna use the Wishart distribution to characterize the distribution of the sample covariance matrix. So just to note, this is a distribution over matrices here. Yep. Our random samples are P by P matrices. Now this is related to the chi-squared distribution. If P 
is 1 here and if sigma is just 1 and then the xi's are just normal not 1 random variables and so m here is just the sum of normal not 1 random variables squared so this has a chi squared n distribution okay so there's a link between chi squared and wishart So what we're going to want to work towards is a proposition proving that the sample covariance matrix S, this has a Wishart distribution. Now I'm going to move this N over to the left here. So I'm going to consider N S. Okay, so that's N times the sample covariance matrix. So what it'll prove is that if X1 up to Xn are multivariate normal and p-dimensions um, with mean mu and variance matrix sigma then n times s has a wishart distribution with and p-dimensions with variance matrix sigma and n minus one degrees of freedom okay so again just to relate back to the univariate case if s squared is the sum of the sample means of univariate vectors at xi minus x bar all squared over n where the xi's are all normal mu sigma squared then n times s squared over sigma squared has a chi squared n minus one distribution so this is the analogue of that. This is the multivariate analogue of this result. Okay, and we're going to take us a while to prove this, but that's what we're going to work towards over the next uh, video, in the next video.